Welcome to chapter 7. I've decided to split up section 7.1 to two parts, just so that your life could be a little bit easier and you don't need to watch a long video. This material is quite important. Chapter 7 and 8 are actually linked together. Okay? We're going to look at another type of function. This one's called the exponential function. And to give you a flavor of what this is all about, I'm going to ask you to take a look at this scenario. So let's say I've got this situation, and I want to let you know that class is canceled this Friday, because uh, we all want a break, don't we? Yeah. So I'm going to send a text to uh, two of my students. And then, of course, I don't want to send it to everybody. That's way too much time. I'm going to tell each student to send a text to other two students, and so on, and so on, and so forth. So let's see what happens after each what I call level. So our first level is where the teacher sends out two texts. So you got like text number one, I go T1, and then here's like text number two, right? T2. And then I guess at that level, those two students with the first two texts will then also go and text to other students, so guess what? There's a third text that goes out, a fourth text, then a fifth one, and I guess then a sixth one. And then we can keep going, right? So here's my seventh and eighth, ninth, tenth. So each person texts to others. Okay. And we keep uh, going along this process, dot, dot, dot. Okay. In this situation, the number of texts grows what we call exponentially. It's really fast, right? Think about two texts, the first level, then four, then eight. And it says, and the number of texts represented at each level of the tree okay, can be represented by a special type of equation. Now, the equation here is 2 to the power of x. Okay? I should say, actually, expression. It's not an equation, expression. Just because there's no equal sign. Okay? Where x represents the level. So if you think about level 1, it's 2 to the power of 1. That's 2 texts. Right. Level 2, well you've got 2 to the power of 2, that's 4 texts that were then. Level 3, 2 to the power of 3, that's 8 texts. Okay? So this is an example of an exponential function. And I'd like us to take a look at y equals to 2 to the power of x. And let's see if we can graph this up, okay? I know I left some space there, so I'm going to go back to that in a sec, but let's just do 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? When I plug in x equals 0, that's 2 to the power of 0, and this is expon exponents, or exponents, <laughs> exponents, <laughs> anything to the power of 0, of course, just equals 2, yeah, that's right, 1, so hopefully you remember that from whatever, grade 8, grade 9 math. 2 to the power of 1, that would just be equal to 2. 2 squared, that's 4. 2 cubed, that's 8. 2 to the power of 4, that's 16. Okay? So I'm going to plot these points. I'm going to plot them now. And notice why we say this is exponential growth, because it grows really, really fast. Really, really fast. Okay? Now, I did leave some space to the left of 0, so let's try the values like negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, okay? Anyone remember what happens with negative exponents? Yes, we can write them as positive exponents by putting them in the denominator. So 2 to the power of negative 1 is the same thing as 1 divided by 2 to the power of positive 1. And 2 to the power of positive 1 is just half. If I do the same thing here now with negative 2, that's 2 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 2 to the power of positive 2, 2 to the value, or not 2 to the value, 2 to the power of 2 is just 4, so this just equals to 1 quarter. And let me just do one more, 2 to the power of negative 3, that's 1 over 2 cubed, 2 cubed we know is 8, so that's 1 eighth, this gets pretty, pretty flat. Now, notice if I ch keep choosing more negative numbers, I get smaller and smaller values, but they all tend to be positive. So, if I were to connect the dots together, the graph is pretty close to zero, way to the left, but then shoots up really, really quickly. Okay? And so, there you have it. Okay? There's your first graph your first exponential graph, y equals to 2 to the power of x. Okay. 
Let's use this equation now to determine how many texts were written at the sixth level. So if I were to continue the graph, you'll see it goes up further and further. If I use the equation y equals 2 to the power of x, I'm going to replace x with 6 because I want the sixth level. That's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 8 times 8, I believe, is just 64. So 64 texts are actually sent at the sixth level. This equation, y equals to 2 to the power of x, is an example of an exponential function. It is a function that has this type of format, y equals to c to the power of x, where c is just a constant, okay, just a number. Oh, yeah, I should write it down here, <laughs> where c is a constant. Don't need to write twice, okay? And we're going to use this equation quite a bit, because in later parts, we're going to look at different real phenomena that actually use exponential functions. Some of these things include population growth, so like how the population of Canada perhaps grows, or the growth and decay of substances. This is quite often in sciences. And maybe even the value of investments earning compound interest. So if you're in the business world, hey, you see exponential functions too. So science, business, even human geography all have this exponential function in their area. Okay, let's turn the page, please. We're still going to do the intro to these characteristics of exponential functions. I want us to just quickly look at the observations of this graph, y equals c to the power of x. Okay, I'd like you to make sketches of the following graphs. Uh, you can use your graphing calculator, you have one, I know some of you don't, so I'm actually going to make a table of values and hopefully show you things from there. I'd like you to make the sketch first and then answer these questions about what do you notice, okay? So let me try to color code these. I'll use red for that one, how about blue for that one, and green for the last one, okay? I'll make a table of values somewhere right here. X, and then we'll have y equals 2 to the power of x, y equals 3 to the power of x, and y equals 1 half to the power of x. Okay, let's see what you get. Um, I'm going to choose these values for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so for the red one we've done before, that's just 1 quarter, 1 half, and if you don't remember these, go back and look on page one of your notes. And I'm just going to roughly, uh, let's see, let's do negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And yeah, here's one, let's call that one. And of course I'm just making sketches, okay? Whee! Okay, that's y equals to two to the power x. Okay, 3 to the power x though, so that's 3 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 3 squared, that's 1 ninth. 1 over 3 to the power of 1, that's 1 third. 3 to the power of 0 is still 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 squared seems to be 9, and 3 cubed is 27, so looks like it's pretty flat, even flatter than 2, but then, whoop, whoop, 2, 9, and then, Whoa, so flatter, but whoa, steeper. And then finally, we've got this last one, one half to the power of x. This is kind of interesting. Uh, one half, hmm. so one half to the power of negative two. Remember, negatives means um, one over, so it's like one over one half to the positive two. Uh, sorry power of positive 2, so 1 half squared is 1 quarter, 1 over 1 quarter, that's just equal to actually 4, okay? If I do the same thing for the other ones, I think that's just 2, 1 half to the power of 0, remember anything to the power of 0 is still 1, and then you have 1 half, then 1 half all squared is 1 quarter, and then 1 half all cubed is just 1 eighth. So this one seems to be a little bit interesting. It's like 4, then 2, then still 1, then a half, quarter, and so on. 
So this graph seems to be like this. Okay. This is y equals to one half to the power of x. Okay. And just notice something. Let's go back to chapter one um, and how we looked at graphs with negatives and the transformations stuff. Remember, one half can be written as two to the power of negative one. Well, notice what happens when I rewrite this like this: two to the power of the negative x. A negative from chapter 1, that transformation unit, means I'm doing a reflection, yes, in which axes? If you set the y-axis, you're totally correct. So technically, the green graph here should be a reflection of the graph in red. Okay. So note, I'll write down here, note, this can also be thought of as a reflection of y equals 2 to the power x in the y-axis because you replace x with negative x. Okay. Now all of these graphs have the following things in common. Okay. So let's take a look at these things. I'll put that in purple. The y-intercept, what would that be? Yes, they all seem to intersect at 1. And of course that's because when x is 0, when, when x is an exponent, Anything to the power of 0 is 1. How about x-intercepts? Well, these all have none. They get closer and closer to the x-axis as the x-coordinate gets really, really small, but it never actually equals to 0. Okay. Domain, well, this works for all real numbers, so it looks like it's OK. And the range, because it seems to be always positive, and since there's no x-intercept, the range must be y is greater than 0. And then in the past, we looked at vertical asymptotes. Now we've got something called horizontal asymptotes. So these graphs get closer and closer to 0, but never touch. So the actual asymptote is this dotted line that is horizontally. And the equation of that line would be y equals to 0. Remember, horizontal lines, the y values are always the same. So y equals to 0. Okay? These observations are always true of y equals to any constant raised to the power of x. Okay? Now, just to be aware, uh, when c, that value, is greater than 1, the exponential function is really just increasing because the two examples in red and blue show that the graph increases as x increases. However, when c is less than 1, like the green graph, this exponential function is actually decreasing. Or sometimes, instead of saying it's growth, we call it decay because as x gets larger and larger, the y value gets smaller and smaller. Okay. All right. You can think about what happens when c equals to 1. I'll let you do that in your own. And I guess when you do that, well, OK, I'll do it with you. The exponential function is just really just 1 to the power of x. Well, that's just equal to 1. So it's not really increasing. It's not really decreasing. It's really just stable. <laughs> not really an exponential function. Not really an exponential. It's more like a constant, right? more like constant. Okay? So that's why I didn't really include that in my notes. But if you want to write it down, you can. If you don't, delete it. All right. Let's finish off this section with a quick application of exponentials. In part two, we'll do more applications of exponentials. But just right now, I'd like to take a look at this one. We, lock, we talk about pH quite a bit in science. pH value of swimming pools, of course, needs to be checked regularly. And what they do is they actually take a measurement of the concentration of the hydrogen ions, that's the H plus ions in water. Not too sure what I'm talking about. Talk to your chemistry teacher. Okay. Uh, the relationship between the hydrogen ion concentration, which is called capital H in my example here, in moles per liter is given by the formula H of P, which is one tenth to the power of P. Or some people like to write it as 10 to the power of negative P. It's the same thing since 1 tenth is equal to 10 to the power of negative 1. Okay, P, of course, is the pH. So the hydrogen is 
based on the pH. So water in the swimming pool should have a pH that is between 7.0 and 7.8. So the question is, what is the equivalent range of the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, they gave you the p-value. All I want you to find now is the h-value. So really what I'm saying is h of 7.0 would be 1 tenth to the power of 7.0. And if you do that on your calculator, I'll do that too. 1 tenth to the power of 7. Well, they give 1 e to the 7, which means it's 1, and then times 10 to the power of 7. So I'm just going to move the decimal place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So once again, this is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7. Okay. We'll do the same thing then for uh, the 7.8 number. So 1 tenth to the power of 7.8. We'll punch this into our calculator. 1 tenth to the power of 7.8. Hmm, 1.584. Okay, so 1.584 times 10 to the negative 8, which means I'm going to move the decimal place now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 0 0.0, 0 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so ultimately, what's the equivalent range? Well, therefore, the equivalent range would be would be 0 0.0000000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 zeros, 1, 5, 8, 4, and since it has to be between, that's the smaller bound, and then your H plus part has to be bigger than that, and then also less than 0 0.0000001. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oops. 6. Okay. And of course, these are all moles per liter or molarity, I guess, right? All right. There's your first example of how exponentials are used. Come back for part two and you'll find out more.